webinar. Uh, Beth uh, just started the recording, so this uh, session is recorded and it's going to be available on our U YouTube page like any other uh, monthly webinars. We have a lot of treasures now, by now, after two years of webinars about inventory, about accounting, uh, best practices uh, in many areas, MRP, production, uh, you name it. So we, we basically covered in the past two years uh, many areas of SAP. Today we are doing another accounting session. Today we're going to focus on banking and payments. I know probably all our clients and all the companies we are working with, working with that module. So a lot of things that you will probably, uh, that you are probably familiar with, but we will try to uh, teach you some new stuff and hopefully uh, you will learn one or two things uh, from today's session. Uh, so with that being said, this is our third accounting webinar this year. Uh, we had this year a session about 1099 and about accounting basics. This is all available in our YouTube channel and also available on our website as a blog, so feel free to uh, log in. Today's session, we're going to demo on uh, the 10.0, the latest version of the HANA version. But this session is relevant for all uh, clients. So, you know, whether if you're using SQL or HANA platform 9.3 or 10.0, everything we're going to show today is going to be uh, relevant. Um, so today, the objective is to uh, go through the foundational knowledge of SAP Business One and look at banking and look at incoming payments, outgoing payments, uh, deposits, and all that stuff uh, to get yourself familiar with the banking operations, uh, to let yourself know what integrations are available, uh, what can you do with credit card, and all that nice stuff. So with that being said, let's take a look at the agenda for today. So we're going to go through some of the basics, uh, incoming payments and deposit, how you do that, um, how can you work with integrated credit card uh, solutions. Uh, then we go to the other side, to the outgoing payments and how to uh, do the checks printing in SAP Business One. We're going to go through some more um, uh, maybe advanced features like the payment wizard that allow you to automate uh, your uh, payments to your vendors. We're going to look at reconciliations, manual reconciliations, but also uh, some advanced uh, reconciliation options like automatic and semi-automatic reconciliations. And then we're going to look at some bank automation uh, and integrations that we could have in place. Um, if we have time, we're going to talk about some alerts and approvals and we're going to finalize with some additional documentations and uh, treasures that you could um, you know, get yourself uh, self-trained uh, uh, after post this session. All right, excellent. So with that being said, we are ready to get started with the incoming payments. So uh, let's go into SAP and I'm gonna stop my camera so because I'm gonna look at uh, my other screen, if that's okay. <clears throat> so we're gonna focus today on the area of the banking uh, here. So we're gonna start with the incoming payment and then we're going to go into the deposit. So incoming payments is a way to receive a payment uh, from a customer, but you could also receive a payment from a vendor. You know, if they got your credit memo and you need to receive a payment from them, so you could choose a vendor, but you can also choose, you know, an account uh, not related to a business partner. Uh, before we get started with the different options of the incoming payment, I want to drill down into one of uh, the customers uh, to see some relevant setup on the uh, Beefy Master uh, data that could be relevant for the banking. So when we look at customer, we're going to look at those three tabs, the payment terms, payment run, and accounting. So I could highlight some of the relevant fields here. So with the payment terms, uh, one of the things to look at is the payment terms. And, and the payment terms basically, you know, if you do cash basic, net 30, net 60, and things of that nature, a um, couple of nice options in the payment terms is the ability to also add discounts. So normally if you have net uh, 30, you know, based on the posting date plus 30 days, that will determine the due date of the uh, invoice. So if you post an invoice on today, you know, it's going to add 30 days basically. But you have uh, some additional options here like add installments uh, of uh, multiple payments of the invoice or something else that is available here 
cash uh, discount name. So with cash discounts, we are saying, okay, they get a um, net 30, but if they pay within 10 days, which includes freight and sales tax, we could include, they will get an additional 2% uh, discount and that will be available uh, automatically in the uh, incoming payment. One thing to watch out here, um, the payment term is associated with a price list, okay? So in some cases, if you are changing a payment term to a customer, the system will ask you, do you want to change also the price list? Because there is a price list associated with the client, right? With the customer. So as we change the payment terms, it will ask if we want to change the uh, associated uh, price list. So you normally want to say no to keep that price list uh, uh, the same and not to change it from the price list that is associated with the payment term. So something really important to watch out for. Uh, you have other things here, for example, the uh, business partner bank. So if you want to uh, define what are their banks, so it's automatically going to come up when you receive uh, a check from them and things of that nature, you can define all their banks here and define a default here. Um, we also have an area to add credit card details, but many of our clients that really need functionality of credit cards are going to work with an add-on, and we're going to work. Uh, we're going to talk about it in a, a few minutes from now. Uh, let's look at the payment front. So we have the house bank that is really come from our the company uh, uh, house bank. Uh, so this is the bank that your company is working with, and then you have different payment terms and payment terms uh, payment methods is really in order to work with the payment uh, wizard and automate incoming payments and outgoing payments that we're going to talk maybe in 20, 25 minutes from now. Uh, but just to touch on that, um, many of our clients working to automate their uh, vendors actually, not their customers, but the definition is the same. You, could, you can define different payment methods and a default for a business partner. It means, you know, if it's incoming or outgoing, uh, what is the payment method that we work with that uh, client, you know, the bank details uh, and many different other options. So later on, as we go through that wizard, we will see that automatically the system will recommend those types of payments. And last but not least, under the accounting tab, there is a consolidated BP. In this case, for example, Maxitech, it has a parent uh, company, Parameter Technology. It, and when we do payment consolidation, it means we can send many payments to Parameter Technology and maybe to, uh, you know, sorry, to Maxitech. We can uh, issue uh, payments for Maxitech, but the parent company for uh, Maxitech is Parameter. So when we go to incoming payments and choose Parameter as the BP, we will see all the invoices also for Maxitech. So Parameter can pay for uh, Maxitech um, invoices. All right, if you guys have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat and we will um, answer that. But now we can go into the incoming payments. So incoming payments, I will go into the add mode. The first thing is, of course, to select if, uh, you know, who to receive payment from. So in this case, I'm going to do the traditional, uh, you know, the most standard way we receive a payment from a customer. So I'm going to choose here the parameter technologies client, and we can see all their in invoices. In the list here, we can also see the overdue dates and other uh, elements. Um, like everywhere in SAP Business One, we may have an additional field. So you could see here the cash discount. So for example, invoices that are paid within, you know, 10 days, we can see that they have a discount uh, in them coming automatically. We can always adjust the discount for this and to other uh, areas if we wish to, uh, but that discount comes uh, as a default. Uh, we can assign a project or blanket agreement and uh, other things, contact person, address, and things of that nature. We can record the payment date uh, over here. And the first thing to do is to select which uh, invoices we want to pay. If a company uh, paid us and we don't know which invoices or they pay on account, we can always uh, check the payment on account and enter the amount received over here, okay? 
But if we really close some invoices, we're going to mark the invoices uh, that uh, we are looking to close. For example, in this case, I'm looking to close uh, three invoices and uh, maybe the third invoices that is open for 13, for 10.6, I want to pay only, uh, you know, I received payment only for 5,000 out of that. So I'm going to write 5,000 to reflect that invoice. And later on, the system will leave the uh, invoice open for the appropriate account, amount. Okay, so we mark the invoices. We know the amount that we got paid. So total, we got paid 11 to 10. Uh, we can add journal entries. So the journal entry will have those notes in the memos, in the remarks. And then the last thing to do is how did we get paid? So we can do two things, a uh, few things actually, either to go here to the payment means or from here to go to the same window, uh, clicking on this payment means or through the, uh, right click payment means. And then we have four main options to receive a payment, either via check. And we see in this case, the bank is coming automatically. So all we have to do is write the check number and the amount if we receive the check. Bank transfer, if we got ACH or any other uh, bank transfer, we choose the GL account of the bank, the transfer date, if we want any reference, not mandatory, and uh, the total. We can also add bank char charges anywhere and we will hit the bank charges GL account. Uh, the third payment means is the credit card. Um, mainly, our customers that are using credit card add-ons are working with that because it's fairly tedious to go through many details of credit card and to enter them manually. So many of our clients that don't have many credit card transactions, they actually use the bank transfer instead of the credit card tab. So they are selecting here the credit card clearing account as the bank uh, to receive that payment, if that makes sense. And last but not least, uh, cash. Some, some of our customers still getting cash, especially if you work in some retail industries. Uh, so this is the default cash account, and you can specify here the, uh, the amount. So in this case, I'm going to do the check. Uh, I'm going to write the check number. In our case, 555 is the check number. And uh, the amount, you could type the amount if you wish. You could do right click uh, copy balance due, which will copy the total amount of the invoices to be paid. Or you could do uh, with your keyboard use control B as in balance to copy the amount. Now we see that the balance due, we, you know, the whole amount is here. We can, by the way, have multiple checks if we wish with multiple lines and multiple due dates. But in this case, we do just one check. So I'm going to click OK. Like everywhere in SAP, you could do, uh, uh, you know, journal entry preview to see the journal entry, or you can add the transaction and see the journal entry after the fact. So I'm going to add that transaction. And uh, I'm going to go back and we can see the journal entry is associated with the transaction. So we can see that it's uh, deleted the balance of the client of 11 to 10, and it hits the checking uh, clearing account. And as we deposit you to move from checking to our uh, bank, from the clearing account to our actual bank account. Some clients decide to automatically have the incoming payment goes to the uh, bank account, which is totally fine. Uh, so then they don't need to use the deposit uh, window at all. Uh, what we can see with this, you know, those two invoices were fully paid. So it's always, we see that in the transaction. Uh, so if we go into the invoice, we can see that the applied amount was 1908. It's not going to be available in the aging report anymore. And the balance due is uh, zero. Uh, if we look at the relationship map, the uh, incoming payment is always going to be associated with the uh, AR invoice, including other documents that uh, were associated maybe from before. Uh, and if we look at the partial invoice uh, that we got payment for, we can see that in this case, the total was 13,419, uh, but the applied amount was only 5,000. So we still have a balance due of uh, 8,419. So that uh, is going to be the amount on the aging. So on the aging, we can see the total, but also what is the balance due. Um, one more thing to mention about incoming payment. There is an option to do, um, uh, to get a, a 
payment on account or basically to do a uh, our down payment so that means uh, maybe you want to record a payment before you actually have the final invoice so AR down payment allow you to copy from sales orders and add the appropriate amount and, and as you complete your delivery and invoicing that uh, incoming payment will be associated with the AR invoice uh, another way to do that, or maybe even an easier uh, way to do that, if you have an open sales order, I'm going to look maybe for uh, open sales order. Those are closed. Here I have one that is open for $29.99. You could actually from here create an incoming payment. You go to the payment means or through uh, right click. And again, maybe the next check is 556. And you, you, know, you could get a partial payment. Or you could get, you could have uh, Control B, pay the whole uh, order basically. Um, so as I uh, update that uh, sales order, it now created uh, uh, the down payment for that uh, sales order. So as I go through delivery, or in this case, I'm going to go directly to an invoice, we will see that that down payment is associated, so there is no uh, balance due. And if we want to look at the down payment transaction, we can always take a look uh, at that here and see what it closed based on what and things of that nature. And of course, we can add the AR invoice and now everything also in the relationship map is going to be consolidated uh, to that transaction. In this case, we have serial numbers, so I'm, I'm going to skip that uh, window. All right, any questions? Again, feel free to put them in the chat or otherwise we can uh, look uh, quickly at uh, deposits. So after I receive the payment, you know, we can go into the banking and we have uh, check register, you know, will allow us to get all the um, data on our checks. So for example, if we know our check was 555, um, and I'm gonna do here to check 555. We can see that it hasn't, uh, from some reason I don't see that here. I think that's the check amount, so we'll pull that up into the other one. Uh, thank you so much, Beth. Oops, Oops. there we go, 5555. Five, five, five. <laughs> All right. There what a go. save, thank you, Beth. I got All right, you back. So we, yeah. <laughs> So we look at this, we see that all the details about the checks, you know, it hasn't been deposited, so we don't have any details, but we did receive a payment and we have a link to the payment and uh, we have a check status that, you know, haven't been deposited or canceled or any other thing. So all the information about that check is gonna be resides here, uh, including a couple of other options, in, including endorsement. Um, I'd like to take a look at the deposit uh, real quick. So deposit, you know, once we receive a payment and if it uh, hits a clearing account, now we can deposit it to our uh, checking account. So we can see all our checks. We can see all our credit cards to be deposited. We can see all our cash. By the way, in 10.0 version, you will see that there is attachment to all those incoming payments and uh, deposits. So you could actually have the deposit slip if you wish and attach it to the deposit uh, window and things of that nature. If you got a, you know, uh, a slip from, for the incoming payment, you can attach it to the incoming payment window and, and so forth. So now I wanna deposit it. So I choose to which bank I deposit it. So the only important thing is to select the um, GL account. If you wish for informative reasons, you can select the branch and, and other details related uh, here. But basically we shall select which checks we deposited or if we deposited all, we can just double click to deposit all. It shows us the totals. It could reconcile amounts after deposit. So I'm gonna leave it uh, checked and just add that. So what that does from a journal entry perspective, move everything from the clearing account basically. And we can see that line by line with the check numbers into the uh, cash and bank. All right, so uh, that kind of covers the deposit and those are all basic stuff. So we're gonna get into the fun stuff in, the, in a few minutes. So let's talk a little bit about credit card processing. 
So uh, to clients that work with credit card processing uh, or process a lot of credit cards, you can always do that manually and enter the transaction in SAP. But when you do that uh, quite a lot, and when you work with a lot of credit cards, there is a value to uh, use an add-on to manage credit cards because then it saves that uh, in SAP. It doesn't save the whole credit card details, just the last four numbers because um, those two solutions that we present here are PCI compliance, so uh, none of your employees will be able to access the full credit card details and so forth. But you know, it allows you to reduce the double entry. It allows you to have fewer errors when everything integrated and increase efficiency. Uh, in some cases, lower the processing fees and also increase cash flow if you get the invoice and the client pays sooner. And of course, better client experience because with those solutions, for example, you can send the invoice to the client uh, with a link for payment. So you, know, you don't need to touch and actually to create the incoming payment and so forth. So we are working with two uh, add-ons that are doing uh, credit card processing for SAP Business One. And let me explain the details. It's, we are not going to demo the full functionality of those two solutions because it's worth having a totally separated sessions. But the two solutions are uh, Boyum B1 I payment and EBS charge. And they both do a great job and we have clients using both. The main difference between them is that Boyum B1 I payment will work with your current merchant. So if you work with authorized.net or if you work with Square or other tools, and if you already have your merchant, Boyum I payment work with most of the merchant. And they, I believe, you know, the charge is very minimal for add-on uh, charge and the installation is fairly simple, uh, up to a day. But uh, that's kind of a solution that would work with your current merchant. With EBIS charge uh, owned by Century Business Solutions, uh, they are also the merchant. So uh, they provide their add-on free of charge and doing the installation for you on your environment. Uh, and uh, well, their promise is really to save you on credit card fees. So one of the things they do is uh, they do an audit on your account. They promise you saving and, and the fees basically is to split the saving between uh, you as the uh, customer to EBS charge as the merchant. Uh, so those are the two solutions and uh, Beth, uh, I think Beth put in the chat here the uh, link to uh, more details about uh, those solutions, but feel free to uh, engage with us if you wish to have a personalized demos of those uh, or get more granular about that uh, functionality. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in the chat, there's a few links. That first one is just a blog from our website that um, kind of goes over the details of some of the benefits, um, you know, some that Oren was mentioning and uh, just overall some of the benefits of having an integrated payment solution. And then uh, the next link is for BoyMI payment and then the last one is eBiz charge. So um, like he said, if you're interested in learning more about those, reach out to us and, and we're happy to uh, cover those with you. All right, so otherwise on to our AP side of things. So we looked at uh, everything on the AR side, um, you know, from our incoming payments and deposits. And uh, a lot of the process is similar on the AP side. And there are a couple, you know, small differences that I'll note or things that you can do uh, here on the AP side. But in general, a lot of this outgoing payment process is really similar. So um, as you are going to process an outgoing payment, just like we did on our incoming payment, we select our vendor and we're presented with the list of uh, invoices for payment to that vendor. We can also do uh, an outgoing payment to a customer, but you know, most, um, most generally the scenario is an outgoing payment to the vendor. Now we can go through and select the various invoices that we'd like to be paid. Or, um, you know, we see a lot here, this is a demo system, we see a lot here that have uh, some overdue payments. So, um, you know, maybe as we're looking at our cash flow and understanding what ability we have to uh, pay these overdue payables, um, we say, okay, well, we are going to, you know, write a check for, we have $20,000 and we're going to pay, you know, the latest uh, or the oldest outgoing uh, or 
oldest AP invoices um, under this outgoing payment. So we're going to, right there in the payment means, um, select $20,000 for the check. And you'll see, we'll go into the check processing next, but you'll see right now there's no check number uh, assigned yet to this check. Um, it'll be assigned later as we actually do our check run. So we'll say, okay, we have $20,000 $20, is our total amount due. And then we have this add in sequence option, which allows us to, as we click it, you'll see it's now selected documents from the oldest to the newest to fulfill that $20,000 amount. Um, you can see in this last one, so it's fully fulfilled those two uh, invoices and left the remainder of that $20,000 check uh, to go towards this last invoice. And then um, from there, all we do is add our incoming payment. We'll select OK. So this is something we'll touch on it a little bit in the end, but the approval uh, functionality in SAP does support approvals for outgoing payments. Uh, just like, um, you know, all of your other documents, you can add terms so you can, you know, select to have approvals on outgoing payments over, you know, $5,000 or things like that. Um, and those will go through that approval process. And then just like we had on our incoming payments, we can also drill directly down into that journal entry and see how that's hitting our general ledger. All right, and then uh, kind of one last similarity there between our incoming payments and our outgoing payments. Um, on the AR side, where we had the ability to add a down payment to an order and then have that down payment uh, recognized as we go to invoice, we also have that capability on the AP side. So we can do a down payment on a purchase order. And then as we copy that to the AP invoice, um, our balance due on that AP invoice is, is reflected with that down payment. All right, and then last thing to kind of show here before we do the payment wizard. So this is the, you know, we're showing kind of the manual process of adding these incoming and outgoing payments. Um, in just a second, I'm gonna give it back to Oren and he'll go through the payment wizard that helps automate all of this. Um, but before we do that, we also have just another banking report that I wanted to highlight, which is this payment drafts report. Um, so with this payment drafts report, um, if you do want to, you know, not add an incoming payment or outgoing payment just yet, but save it as a draft. Um, you can do that and view all of your outgoing or incoming payment drafts here. You can see just for specific users or for all users. And then as you, um, you know, are running cash flow reporting or anything like that, you have the ability to kind of add in these draft documents and see how uh, those are hitting the incoming and outgoing payments. All right, so on to, um, I think, Orin, we wanted to do actually the checks next. So before we uh, jump into our payment wizard and show how that works, um, we'll go ahead and run through our check processing options. So um, now that we've added this outgoing payment, we you can see, or as we've gone through the payment means, we added it as a check payment. So. Um, there's a couple different options in terms of processing checks. First, we're going to go over our single check printing, so how to do um, just a one-off check, and then the more likely scenario, printing checks in batch. Um, so first, we can go to our uh, checks for payment form here. We'll go to our last check for payment, and we can see that this is the one, um, that check that we had just added to the Best, system. We don't see it. Oh. Sorry about that, there we are. Thank you. Hmm. Sure. All right, so this is our uh, our latest checks for payment that was associated with that outgoing payment that we just processed. Um, you can see where I had mentioned it doesn't have a check number associated just yet, uh, but it will have that check number associated once uh, it's printed and we've gone through the check number confirmation. So first, before you print it, um, there are a lot of options for uh, the different layouts in SAP uh, in terms of printing your checks. So um, in general, you know, if you're running SAP, um, you know, likely during your implementation, this is something that uh, we worked with you on, made sure that, um, you know, when you print your check off, everything is, is lining up correctly and all of that. But, uh, you know, if for any case you're switching banks or things like that, 
Um, you do have lots of options that are available out of the system um, that you know can be configured to fit your new check layout. So we'll just look at one of these options, our default option in this system, um, and how the check is going to be printed out. So in this case, we have all of our invoice details, and then this is where we would print on our check stock, and everything lines up there. So as long as uh, everything looks good on this check for payment form, we can go ahead and actually print the check. So this is where the system is going to um, you know, give you a, a second uh, before you actually print the check to make sure that you have your correct stock paper there. So if you're using check stock and you know, maybe have a couple banks, um, it, the system lets you know, hey, make sure that uh, your correct stock paper is in there. And it lets you know uh, what check number is going to be assigned. So that's the next you know, sequential check number. As soon as everything's okay, uh, or everything's ready, you press OK and go ahead and print that check. So now immediately after we've printed that check, uh, this form called the check number confirmation comes up. So in this case, we've just printed a one-off check. Um, so we just have one you know, check number to confirm. Um, but we have a couple of different options here. So by default, it's going to be, our check is uh, going to be unconfirmed. And this gives us a chance to actually confirm if it is printed correctly, it will confirm that check number and assign check number five in the system. Um, in the case that it was not printed, so we have the other kind of two options between confirmed and unconfirmed, which is our damage and our not printed. In the case that it's not printed, that check number can be reused. So you have a chance to actually you know, go back, print the check, and uh, have that check number be used on, on the check when it's finally printed. Um, if you do have a damaged check, so you printed it out and you know now that check is not able to be used because it's been damaged, you spilled coffee on it, you need to reprint it, um, we don't want to uh, use that check number again. So it'll go to the next sequential check number. In this case, everything looks great when I printed the check off, so I'll go ahead and confirm it. Um, you also have the option to leave it as unconfirmed, and then you can always go back to this check number confirmation form later and you know confirm all your checks together. Um, but in terms of the kind of single check printing, that's what that process looks like. So feel free, if you have any questions, pop them in the chat. Otherwise, um, wanted to run through the batch printing. So this is the more, you know, more likely scenario where we're not just printing one-off checks, um, but we're printing multiple checks at a time. So in this case, we go to our document printing and uh, go down here to our checks for payment. This allows us to select uh, exactly which bank that we're printing, you know, which of our banks that we're printing out checks for. In this case, we're going to uh, print from Bank of America. We can also, we have lots of kind of selection criteria here in terms of, you know, who we're printing out the checks for. So if we're uh, just for a select group of vendors or things like that, or even just for, you know, a couple business partners, um, we have all of that capability here. And as soon as we have uh, the checks that, that are ready to be printed, um, we can, let's see, we'll go back to there. Uh, in this case, we have no checks to be printed uh, for, for those, let's see. Bank of New York, ah, uh, okay, our posting date. All right, so we'll expand this posting date a little bit for our checks, and now we can run that uh, document printing there. So now we see we have lots of checks that we can um, you know, print in batch at one time. We see that next check number that's going to be assigned, and as these are printed out, our check numbers are assigned sequentially. And then we just go through that same process of printing those checks, and we have the ability to do the check number confirmation uh, in mass. All right, and then one last report to show you before I hand it back over to Oren is um, our payment drafts report. Or, whoops, sorry, not our payment drafts report. I think our, our check register report, actually. Let me pop that open. 
Um, so in this case, Orin showed you uh, this for you know the AR side, but we can look at it as well for our AP side and see um, all of our different checks, uh, the payment numbers associated, drill into that, or look at our tooltip preview to see high level details, and then see uh, the different statuses as well related to those checks. So if we need to do, you know, go in and kind of drill in, see where, um, what checks have been damaged or not printed. Um, and you can see here, it's not printed, uh, hasn't had a number assigned, whereas these ones have been confirmed and have their check numbers assigned. So it's a good way to view kind of all the information and details um, about all of, all of your checks. Awesome, thank you, Beth. And our next few topics are gonna be more of an automation and more advanced stuff. So excited to get started with that. So the first uh, thing is uh, the payment wizard. The payment wizard is a menu item uh, under directly under banking. So we can go into the payment wizard and that allows you to automate creation of incoming payment as well as outgoing payments. Most of our customers when use it, really use it uh, with outgoing payments. So um, let's, let's uh, imagine that you uh, are running that instead of, you know, every day maybe running multiple checks, you wanna uh, be efficient and maybe run it once a week, uh, the payment wizard. So um, we're gonna do that. Maybe we have multiple saved uh, loads so we can run in the same selection criteria, but we can always, always start from scratch. Um, we need to tell the system, what are we gonna do? We are going outgoing or incoming payments. Are we gonna do for checks, bank transfer, or maybe for both? And when we have a bank transfer, there is also an option to uh, use a bank uh, path if we wanna integrate that with a bank but we, Beth is also gonna talk about a couple of other options to integrate with the bank. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna do just checks, uh, outgoing payments, and uh, I can also say what is the maximum amount. Maybe my cash flow allowed me to spend today only $50,000, so I can include that into the payment uh, wizard, so I, I will not exceed that. Um, as I go uh, to next, this is where I select the different vendors I wish to uh, make payment for. I can make payment for a specific uh, vendor, for a group of vendors, or decide to uh, look at all of them and decide who to pay. So I can check them all or check specific ones if I wish. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna check them all. I see the balance we have with the vendor and uh, I can go next to see the appropriate uh, invoices. This is where I could have multiple selection criteria. What do I wanna pay? Uh, so for example, I wanna everything that is due date up to today, if it's in the future, I don't wanna pay, let's say. A um, Couple of other options, like uh, if we have any tolerance day, or uh, you know, maybe you wanna pay only vendors that have a huge balance, so we can look at that as well, and things of that nature. Priority, I can set by different dates or cash discounts and things of that nature. Uh, in addition, I can also include journal entries and, and some negative transactions with the uh, BP. So those will be shown in the next window, basically. If I hit next, to, next uh, to the next window, this is now when I choose which banks I, uh, of my uh, accounts I wanna use. So in this case, we're gonna use Bank of America. And then it will show me all the relevant uh, vendors that are associated with that. So we see that we have two uh, vendors. I can expand them all or one by one. So now I see one vendor have one invoice and the other one have uh, multiple, multiple ones. I can unselect all of that and kind of uh, select them uh, one by one, which invoices we wanna pay. So in this case, I pay like three invoices of the first uh, vendor and then the second one. And um, I know I may have more cash flow, so I can pay a little bit more uh, until I get maybe to uh, 4,600. If I'm ready, I can see those will stay open and things of that nature. I hit next. And then this is just before execution. What do I wanna do? I can just save them and go back later and execute it. Or in this case, I can execute the payment run 
Uh, I can also have a way to do that on the background. Uh, in this case, I don't have too many transactions. I'm just going to process it now. And it shows me uh, that it's been executed successfully. And at the end, I get a report. So one payment were created, one check was added. I have here all kinds of options in terms of what do I want to print. So I just need to select what uh, transaction I want to print and I can print them. Or if I don't want to print uh, and I know, you know, I can finish the wizard and that's it. So basically in this case, it created for me uh, an outgoing payment. Uh, I can go backwards to the last outgoing payment. I can see the vendor. I can see all the invoices that I selected. And this checkbox will uh, allow me to see what was created manually versus what was created by the payment wizard. And because the payment uh, mean was checks, I ran all only checks, so I can see that I have a check uh, still with a zero check number. So then you can go ahead and run uh, the process of check printing that Beth just uh, went through. Any questions? All right. So if there are no questions, we can go ahead to the next topic. And again, Beth will show in just a few minutes some more automations around uh, bank uh, integration. But what I want to talk next is about reconciliation. And I'm going to start with something that I'm sure most of you are doing using the manual reconciliation window. And then I'm going to go into some advanced reconciliation options. So the manual reconciliation is a very traditional reconciliation option. You basically select your cash at bank. You select what is your ending balance uh, to the date of the statement. So let's say, you know, $100,000 and relevant for maybe 531st of this year. And then you click OK. You will see all the unreconciled transactions waiting for you to be cleared. So you can check them all. In most cases, it's not going to be exactly the same and you will have to do some adjustments and you can do them directly from this window to create either journal entries, incoming, outgoing, deposits and things of that nature. So everything is available from here. But most uh, customers are just selecting one by one, go through the bank statement and making sure that you have all those transactions and go one by one. Let's say you need to go to lunch in the middle. You can always save that, go out of this window, and go back to this window uh, after lunch, and it will save everything that you already cleared. Okay? And then you can continue. Uh, and uh, as long as the difference here is zero, you can reconcile. But if you need to make an adjustment, you can always make an adjustment from here and then reconcile. In reconciliation, you could have a statement number if you wish here to save on the reconciliation and things of that nature. Um, a lot of additional treasures are available here. So, for example, if you want to see the journal entry, you know, memos, uh, reference two and three, um, and, you know, remarks, many other treasures are available through that uh, uh, chain that is available everywhere in SAP. One quick thing always when you view, you can feed the column width to see things more, more light. Okay, so this was the manual reconciliation. Let me show you some other options that may be hidden. And the reason they are hidden is because they are not normally under this menu. So the next thing is reconciliation, which allow you to do manual, but also automatic and semi-automatic uh, reconciliation. And in order to work with that window, you really need to expose the process external bank statement. By default in the US localization, it's not show up on the screen. So if you have authorization, you can always go to the, uh, thank you, Beth, to the form settings here and uh, go under banking, go under bank statement and external reconciliation and check that window process external bank statement by default again this is going to be unchecked in all uh environments 
And for those of you that are in HANA, it's um, our form settings are here. And then those of you that are in SQL, for anybody, you know, they're uh, up here for that main menu. Yep. So then uh, the next thing to do is to uh, go into that uh, external bank statement. So the external bank statement allow you to uh, take from Excel. Uh, if you go to your bank, you can always export to Excel. So to take that Excel file, CSV, you name it, and paste it here together with your reference number and then have the system look for those amount and associated references and the dates and automatically reconcile so you could really handle only exceptions. So how does it work? Let's take a look. So we can choose our GL accounts. In this case, I can do, I think it was cash and bank. So we can see all the details that we had in our bank account. And by the way, because it's a grid, you know, even if you export to Excel, you don't even have to go through upload from Excel and things of that nature. You can simply, as long as the columns are, you know, aligned with your Excel, you can copy paste. You can copy paste the whole thing or, you know, column by column as you wish. But you basically have dates, details, debit, credit. Uh, you could also have, you know, other references, you know, detail, detail two, that's kind of correlate, can correlate with the ref run, ref two, ref three of uh, SAP business one transactions. Uh, so this is basically everything that is coming from the bank. Later on, as I will do the reconciliation, you will see the reconciliation ID here. As long as I don't reconcile, I can always adjust the line, delete the lines and, and things of that nature, change the amount and, and stuff like that. In this window, there are also more advanced features. So if I do that, I can also have the system create a payment for a specific invoice if I wish, but I'm not gonna go through that now. I'm gonna focus really on the reconciliation. So only the left portion is really important. So we brought all the uh, transactions from the Excel uh, bank file. Now that I have it uh, ready, I can go into the reconciliation uh, window. The reconciliation window, I will start with manual so you can see how that works. First thing first, I need to, cho uh, to choose my uh, bank account, which is going to be Cash and Bank. And the due date, I can do it until 5.31st if I wish to, you know, be aligned with uh, the bank statement. And basically, what this window shows, on the left, it will show everything that happened in the system that haven't been yet reconciled. And because I didn't filter, I can see also many uh, old uh, transactions. On the right side, I will see everything that I brought uh, from the bank account. Uh, basically what we have seen on the other window. And what I can do now is one by one, uh, move them down. And if the amount is uh, appropriate, in this case, it's not, right? It's, it's actually the opposite. Uh, we can reconcile but we can move multiple ones per you know one uh, entry in your uh, sap and so forth again as it's zero i can uh, do the reconciliation but the nice thing about this uh, option is the automatic and the semi-automatic features while the semi-automatic features you know you can set up you know your parameters you know um, amount i want it to be to the penny you know, date, I don't mind to have maybe two dates difference between the bank statement and what I have in SAP and the reference could be low. So that kind of set priority for the recommendations. So when I do reconcile, if I click on any transaction, it will show me if there is anything on the right side to reconcile. So, so then I could skip. In this case, it's a demo system and we didn't really match it. So we don't see anything to reconcile and I'm just uh, skipping here. But what's nice about it, most of our clients that are really use that feature is the automatic reconciliation. Because for example, if you have credit card with maybe, you know, dozens or maybe hundreds of transactions a day, you don't want to do that manually. So you could do, you know, automatic reconciliation, compare the totals with restrictions. I want the reference number to be the same with the last uh, five digits that I brought from my bank account. And I want my dates, my posting dates to be the same. So as I do reconcile, it's automatically going to reconcile on the transaction and will leave only the transaction that it didn't match. In this case, like you see, uh, it didn't find anything. So 
uh, the rest of the transaction needs to be done in a manual way. Hopefully it makes sense. And uh, if, again, if you have any questions, that's a way to uh, kind of integrate with the bank in a manual way, kind of export from the bank, bring it to SAP, and then go through more automated uh, reconciliation processes. And with that being said, Beth, I'll move it to you to talk maybe more about uh, other bank automation options. Wonderful. So um, I wanted to share, I, we're not going to do a live demo on this piece because really these bank automation options are, you know, tend to be specific to um, the client and, and what you're looking to do and what you're looking to automate with your bank. So I wanted to talk at a high level about, you know, what the different options are. So essentially, um, you know, having all of your data in SAP and especially all of your banking data means that you can create, um, you know, different files, uh, different consolidated files to be able to send to your bank in a more automated manner. So a couple of the different use cases we see with our clients are either um, positive pay, uh, where you'll have um, kind of a, a docket of all of your different checks that you've processed that day, and you want to send that to the bank every day so your bank knows that, you know, as they're, um, as they're clearing and cashing those checks, that those have all been approved by you. So it gives you another level of security in uh, processing those checks. And then ACH payment files as well. So for these different use cases, there's a lot of, or a few different methods, I would say, um, that in general, we're able to automate uh, this upload process to the bank. So the three different methods I have here on the screen, um, oh, there we are. We the three different methods that we have here on the screen are um, our task scheduler. So um, with Windows, there's a sometimes underutilized function called the task scheduler that's able to generate these files and then move them into an FTP uh, type of environment where um, the bank then has access to that. They grab the file and uh, you know process the positive pay file or the ACH payment file. Um, in general, all of these all of these processes really uh, kind of center around. It's it's just like a query that you would have in your system. Um, it's pulling the data in the in the format that the bank is looking for, and then automating that upload process. So the task scheduler can do that automatically. Um, you can set it to run once a day, and it'll send those files out without uh, you know having any manual user intervention. This launch application option, um, that's that button that maybe you've never even clicked on or paid any attention to uh, in the top bar there in SAP. Um, but this allows you to do, you know, essentially what the task scheduler does, um, but you have control it, over it and the ability to run it manually whenever you'd like. And then um, Boyum, if any of you use Boyum usability package, uh, we can do the same type of automation for these bank files with Boyum. So if that's something that you guys have been thinking about, um, you know, or something that would make your life easier, let us know. And, uh, and we're happy to, you know, explore the different options with you and see what would work best. All right. And then. Awesome, Beth. Perfect. Um, I'll touch on one last thing. I know we're getting towards the end of our time, but um, the last thing I, I touched on it a little bit earlier, uh, but alerts and approvals surrounding banking. Um, in terms of, you know, your queries and reports and alerts, um, those are really, the sky's the limit uh, in terms of, you know, what data you'd like to see reported um, and, you know, automated and alert that's sent to you every day. Um, but there are also uh, approvals for outgoing payments that are supported right out of the box in that approval scenario with SAP. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Beth. So just to wrap up on uh, what we discussed today, we went through incoming payments and deposits and see different options uh, on how to do so. Uh, we talked about credit card processing options and two add-ons that we work with that are secured PCI compliance and provide awesome functionality for uh, clients that are using uh, uh, massively credit card processing. Uh, Beth walked us through the outgoing payments and different options for sequencing and things of that nature. We went through the payment wizard here um, and we saw how uh, check printing works with SAP Business One. 
Then we went through uh, manual reconciliation, but then we talked about different bank automations, either the incoming to get the statement from the, uh, the bank statement and bringing it into SAP and reconcile automatically, or to bring the merchant uh, uh, statement into the reconciliation area and reconcile, but also on the outgoing to uh, integrate with the bank when uh, after we do ACHs, positive pay checks, things of that nature. Again, those are great uh, features. It's also not a huge investment because we are, like Beth said, we're really talking about just creating a query in the format that the bank would like and then to automate that. So normally it will take it between, you know, one day to three days maximum kind of all together, uh, together with the automation of that. And then um, alerts and approvals. Beth, did they add the approval for outgoing payment only in the latest 10.0 version or was it available before? That is a good question. I, I believe it was available before 10.0, um, but I can double check on that. Sounds great. All right, so with that being said, we prepared for you some treasures here. Uh, Beth, maybe we can put those uh, in the chat here so people have uh, the access before we uh, post it online uh, next week. So of course you have uh, some great SAP documentation uh everything you know much more information about the payment wizard how to enable that how to use that from a to z uh we also included dunning wizard uh we didn't touch that today but it allows you to automate reminders to your client even charge late fees and uh send them dunning letters basically in an automated way so there is a lot of setup to that so it's worth going through the full sap documentation and of course anything else in between is available on the SAP help portal that is available online uh, for 10.0 version, but also for any other version, um, starting with uh, nine family version. Uh, not sure what oh. happened. Yeah, pop that back up, there we are. Uh, I think Beth is, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, is, is it a clue that I need to leave here? Uh, we need to yeah. wrap up. So, uh, <laughs> last, last, <laughs> a few documentation of Pioneer here, you know, benefit of integrated system and managing uh, financial with SAP is one previous, you know, link to previous webinars that we have. And, you know, the credit card options that we discussed with you links to those uh, options. So with that being said, um, you know, this is the time to question, but if you, uh, want to touch base later, uh, feel free to reach out to us with any questions, any feedback. Uh, if you want to have future webinars around specific area, again, feel free to reach out to us and we'll incorporate that uh, on our future Friday's uh, webinars. Any questions? Anyone? All right. So Sounds like we no, did a good job then. No questions. All I, right. I guess so. When, when there is no question, there could be two two things, right? Or everything is clear, everybody understood everything, or nobody understood <laughs> nothing, right? Uh, but no, I, I guess every, I guess it was good. Thank you, everybody. And uh, oh, it, it, was, was great to... it, it was very informative. Thank you. I really enjoyed <laughs> it. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you. Glad you could make it land. Hope it was helpful for yeah. you. It was very helpful. Awesome. Great to hear. Well, thank you, uh, everybody. Thank you, Beth. Great to partner with you here again on this uh, monthly webinars. And uh, we'll, have, uh, we'll meet you guys uh, in a month from now on the last Friday of every month when we have our monthly webinars. So happy Friday, yes. everyone. Have a great weekend. Happy Friday. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thanks so much, Bye -bye. everybody. Happy Friday.